Welcome once again to another edition of Shelf Life Book Reviews Online. As always, I thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. Hopefully, you do find them informative, and when you make your selections for books, you add my recommendations to your must-buy lists. Uh, this time out, I'm bringing to your attention two nonfiction books. Um, very, very interesting books, and they all have uh, a relationship to the Second World War. So the first book is Miss Dior, A Story of Courage and Couture by Ju Justine Picardy. And this is published by Faber and Faber, and it retails for $48.95. Christian Dior was one of the most famous fashion designers of all time. He had a rather short life. He only lived to be 52 years old. He died in 1957. But um, he had a sister called Catherine. And um, this book is all about Catherine. Uh, coincidentally, he was, well, uh, she was the highlight of his life in many ways. And his, one, of, one of his most famous fragrances, Miss Dior, was named after you know, Catherine, Miss Dior. And it became his signature fragrance in so many ways. Well, this book is about Catherine. And the author, who has also written about Coco Chanel, um, has really looked extensively into her life. And, but this is mainly about uh, the war years, because interestingly enough, um, she worked for the French Resistance. And uh, in that, she, was, um, she wrote back to people about uh, the movement of the German troops. And so um, she worked underground, basically. And she worked with a gentleman who, call, who was called Hervé's de Chabonnières, and I apologize if I pronounce it incorrectly. Um, he was married, but uh, he was also her lover. Uh, the two worked closely together, helping the French resistance movement against the Nazis, who had you know, taken control of many areas. And in the book, um, we find out that she did a lot, she risked her life many, many times to help uh, the French resistance cause. And actually in 1944, she was finally um, arrested, well, part of a roundup by the Nazis. And um, she was taken to, well, she was in two different concentration camps. The first was Ravenbrook, and the second one, and I have it written down here, um, was, oh golly, it's somewhere here. Um, well, I can't find it, but anyways, uh, it was a, sorry, a second concentration camp, and um, actually she feared for her life because uh, she saw such horrible, horrible conditions around her, people dying, uh, emaciated, starving, and she saw that living conditions where often there were three people to a bed, and the beds were filled with bed bugs and lice. And it does not paint a very rosy picture, but the author shows us, you know, World War II at its worst, which we've already read so, so many books about concentration camps and the Holocaust. But um, actually, Catherine Dior was part of a death march in 1945, and it was almost like her life was over. But she did survive. And the war, of course, ended in 1945. Uh, after the war, she continued with her lover, Hervé's de Chabonnières, <laughs> or whatever it is. And uh, she actually started a flower shop. And because she always loved flowers, they were her life. And um, after the flower shop, she actually produced flowers that were used in fragrances, in many of, you know, uh, perfumes later on. So it's fascinating that she kept up with her love of flowers. In fact, she tended her flower garden um, into her 90th birthday. Um, her, her, her lover, Hervé, um, which she um, went with, uh, he died the year before, but she still tended her flower, flowers, and she died on, I think it was June 17th, uh, 1990 or thereabouts. So this, this, this really is a fascinating book. It's over 400 pages. So if you like a book uh, about famous people and their association with World War II, this is definitely a book that you should add to your collection. It's very, very highly recommended. 
Now the second book of note is Agent Josephine, American Beauty, French Hero, British Spy by Damien Lewis. This is published by Public Affairs and it retails for $40. Now this is the second book that is associated with the Second World War and it shows a different aspect to the war and um, like the first book which um, a lot of people did not know um, you know about an involvement with um, spying this book also is a little known story about Josephine Baker who was a noted uh, African-American singer and she was one of the most well she was considered one of the most beautiful women of her time and one of the greatest singers of her time back in the 1920s when she began. Um, she was born in 1906 as Josephine Frieda MacDonald. The ironic thing was her mother hated her and the fact that she was born, uh, she held that against her that she gave birth to this girl. So uh, almost from the beginning, um, she almost seemed an outcast in her own family. And um, she was born into poverty. And, uh, but she always loved song and she always loved to sing. So the gift of song became her life blood. And in the 1920s, um, she started to entertain at various nightclubs. Now this was around the time of Jim Crow laws where there was racial segregation and black people were only allowed to be in certain you know, areas and clubs and associated with certain people. So eventually she tired of this, the fact that she was held back. And so she went to Paris uh, she joined the Folle Bergère, and um, she was both a singer and a great dancer. And actually, she opened her own nightclub called Chez Josephine, and she performed there. Now, um, there was some bigotry back in, in Paris in the 20s and 30s, but not to the extent of what she faced in the United States. Uh, this book tells about that, but it also tells about the fact that once the Nazis invaded Paris, um, they discriminated against black people and of course Jews as well. So she found herself, um, you know, uh, as, as well, was almost as bad as it was back in the States. So she joined up with a gentleman by the name of, and I'm sorry, my notes here, I have so many notes, Jacques Abte. And um, he, um, he was part of the French resistance movement. So she joined up with him. Uh, he was her best friend and sometimes lover as well too. So the two made sure that they reported on um, you know German troop movements and since Josephine Baker was so popular in nightclubs she often went to talk to the German soldiers and she learned uh, a few secrets that she kept in the back of her mind and it helped with the French resistance cause. So uh, it, it is very interesting. Uh, during the war years, she still entertained American troops and troops of all you know, uh, allied nationalities. And she, people wanted to pay her for her time. She never once took one single penny for entertaining the troops. That was part of her life and part of giving for the war cause. So it was a really fascinating story that uh, she, she was you know, a, a secret war hero. And the book uh, talks about life as, you know, before um, World War II and after World War II, where she did come back to the States and she fought against, um, you know, the civil rights um, laws, you know, against black people. And uh, it, it is really a, a another fascinating book. It is close to 400 pages, like the Misty Orr book. And if you're looking for extensively well-researched, well-written, and informative books about information you never knew before, uh, definitely these two books are ones you should add to your collection without question. And so those are the two books I wanted to draw to your attention. Definitely go get them. So uh, I welcome your comments about the books and about any other of my video reviews that I've done. I think I've done close to 175 now. Hopefully you've watched a few of them. So uh, until we meet again and I bring you two more books to your attention, uh, stay safe, stay sane, stay social distancing, and do stay in touch. I'll see you again real soon, and thank you once more.